All right, so um, we had uh, started some, uh, in, in so we were busy talking about composition of steels and uh, relation to um, how you can make different microstructures. And now we're going through the discussion of compositions and how they affect uh, the, um, the strength properties. And I told you uh, that strengthening um, could be achieved by um, adding some elements that give you solid solution strengthening. You can, do, you can deform the material, so then you have dislocations that give you strain hardening. You can reduce the grain size, yes? And you can um, introduce precipitates, and you'd like to have a high density of very small precipitates, yes? And obviously, um, this mechanism here will require you to change the, the composition to add these precipitates. Uh, this mechanism here, you will uh, need to add phosphorus or silicon and manganese, so that will affect the, the, uh, the composition. And we'll also see that um, in order to uh, get very small grain sizes, we can also um, uh, uh, change the composition to achieve some special effects which will reduce the grain size. And we'll, we'll be discussing that in a moment. All right? Okay, so, um, uh, so what are these mechanical properties? Things like yield strength, ultimate tensile strength. So usually a low carbon steel will have stress strain curve like this. You may get some uh, uh, Luders elongation, as you know. Um, and then the uh, applied engineering stress will reach a maximum. The material will then start to uh, neck. So you'll first form a diffuse neck. Yes, at this time, um, there's only deformation in this zone here. Yes? And the, in the zone that doesn't neck, um, the deformation stops. Hmm? So after uh, the material starts to neck, you get all the deformation is uh, localized in this neck. And eventually, you form a local neck uh, before fracture. Hmm? So this is, for, this is the behavior you'll see um, for a sheet material, sheet steel, for instance, in, in tension. Right? As, uh, what is important here to realize is that um, if you, um, so if I may go back uh, to this, the picture here, you see this is your sample here. It's in a tensile machine, so you pull on it in the length direction, so it has length strain, yes? Uh, but it also changes in thickness and in width. And the reason why is, of course, because when you do plastic deformation, you have to have constant volume, yes? So if you make something longer, you make it longer in this direction, you, can, you get width strain and thickness strain, hmm? okay? And that's important. Um, so if, if this is the length strain, you have uh, the width strain and the uh, thickness strain um, are, are negative you know, because they will be reduced. Yeah? Okay? And so this, is, this uh, uh, red curve here is the, uh, the uh, thickness strain. So it's negative. The more the... Um, uh, so if I have... So the volume is constant during plastic deformation. That means that the, the strain in the length direction plus the strain in the thickness direction plus the strain in the width direction is zero, right? It means there's no change in volume. Hmm? Um, so when you, um, um, this is positive, right? Because I, I pull, yes? And um, these two, hmm, uh, when we deform uh, sheet material, uh, it usually is a constant ratio between these two, which we call R, which is the width strain over the thickness strain. Hmm? This ratio R is the width strain over the thickness strain. And we'd like to have this uh, value, we'd like to have it high. Yeah? The reason is, 
So if I have a volume here, yeah, a material and I, a steel, and I pull on this in this direction, so there will be a width strain and also a thickness strain. So you want the width strain to be larger than the thickness strain. Why? Because when something gets thinner, yes, there is a higher risk that it will fracture and that it will, buck, that, it will uh, uh, that the, the, the formation will uh, localize and you will get fracture. Hmm? That's the reason why we like to have uh, materials with this R value, width strain over thickness strain, posit uh, uh, large, large, positive and large, of course, yes? Okay, so this, because when, so you see if we have less width strain, the, the thickness strain becomes larger, and for instance, when you make a difficult deep drawing part, deep drawn part, such as, as this uh, oil pan here, um, y there is risk, higher risk for fracture. Yeah? So um, how, do we, uh, how do we control this? Well, we'll, we'll see um, in the, uh, as, as the lecture progress that this is done by texture control. Texture control. Okay, but, um, and it's a very important uh, parameter uh, for uh, sheet steel in particular. All right. Um, so the, these, uh, uh, this, so the yield strength, tensile strength, elongation, and uh, R value, as we call it, um, R, we also call it the this factor is also called the normal anisotropy. The normal anisotropy, yes, um, have to be high. Hmm? Yeah. And uh, we control, um, uh, we can control the strength, for instance, by means of uh, solid solution um, hardening. Um, another um, thing we uh, like to control is the, the grain size, yes? And, um, and you know that that's the reason is because this equation, uh, uh, which is an empirical equation, yes, appears to hold in many cases for steels. Uh, and it basically says that if you reduce the grain size, so the grain size is smaller, if you uh, plot here in the x-axis 1 over square root of t, you get a higher strength. So that's a very nice way to get a large strength. Yeah? In um, uh, technology, in, in uh, steel industry, we, we usually do not define a grain size the same way you do in research. Yeah? Uh, first of all, uh, we tend to talk about a grain size, and obviously if you look at this here, uh, well, you can see that there is a distribution of grain sizes. Mm, that's one of the things. And second, uh, uh, well, what do you define as the grain size? Mm? Um, you have a distribution. So what you usually do in technology, you just assume that these grains are spherical. Yes, uh, of course, which is a, a very uh, great simplification. Yes, and then. You do, you do not really define a grain size hmm? in technology. In, t in technology, you define a parameter which is called the, um, the number of grains per surface area. Yes? And that is the basis for what we call the ASTM number. Yes? ASTM number. And that is often used in technology uh, for, to describe grain size of steels, and it, and it basically uh, is the description of the density of grains in a metallographic sample observed at a certain magnification in an optical microscope. So that's something. Um, so, and these ASTM numbers, uh, they go from typically, uh, the, the scale is, is, is larger, but typically will go from one to about 10 or more. Hmm? Uh, and uh, so, so the way you have to look at it, yes, is um, 
this the ASTM is a uh, um, is an organization, professional organization that um, uh, publishes uh, standards uh, for materials and also for methods of measuring things. Mm -hmm. um, so what what you do, you observe um, a 250 uh, micron by 250 micron uh, uh, surface of a metallographic sample at, with a uh, metallographic microscope. So that corresponds to uh, uh, 62,500 uh, uh, square microns here. Mm -hmm. And uh, say you have one grain, yeah, one grain in here, yes, it will have a diameter of 250 microns. Huh? We, we assume all the grains are circular. Uh, on the, uh, uh, all the grains are spherical, and, and so if you make a cut, uh, you'll, you'll see a grain diameter. Um, so, this is, so I have one grain with uh, 250. <coughs> so, um, and um, if I have <coughs> excuse me, a grain that's only one micron in size, I will have, I can put, um, if I would fill this surface, 512 uh, grains, okay? So, so um, you see here, grain diameter 250 corresponds with ASTM number of one, yes? So that means uh, this is the size of this uh, grain, um, uh, the, the surface covered by this grain. So the number of grains per surface is one, yes? And then on the other end of the scale, I have uh, a diameter of uh, 11. In this particular uh, uh, scale, 11 microns corresponds to, um, I, I said one micron, I um, take this back as 11 microns, uh, 512, and that's an, in that particular scale corresponds to 10, yes? And, and for those who are familiar with uh, steels, you know that most of the grain sizes uh, for steels will be within that range of air, uh, grains. Hmm? Okay, and um, so, uh, so so that's how uh, grain size is, is defined from a technical point of view. Yeah? And so, uh, using this formula here, you can uh, go from the uh, the ASCM number to the grain diameter. Yes, and you you find a single number. Okay, but you have to be aware of the fact that uh, uh, it's, 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 it's not defined this, the way you would expect. Hmm? Hmm. Um, in research, we, what we will do is uh, we will measure, for instance, intercept lengths and average that. And we have other techniques to, to measure uh, grain size, average grain size, or the um, distribution of grain sizes. Okay? But, um, so we, we won't be talking about this, so we, we'll just assume that there is, a, uh, that the grain size we get from, for instance, ESDM technique uh, that measures the, uh, the um, surface area of, of um, uh, surface density of grains, that that's, that's uh, the good way to, uh, to obtain a grain size. Um, what happens to material when we go reducing the grain size, yes? Is everything positive? Usually we like to think that it is positive, so definitely we know we get an increase in yield strength and an increase in uh, UTS. Um, we do get also an improvement in toughness. Now, toughness uh, doesn't mean that the elongation increases, and the contrary, you get less elongation when you reduce the grain size. You get less elongation, okay? So the material has less plasticity. What, so what's, what's the meaning of toughness? The, the toughness refers to the resistance that the material uh, gives to uh, fracture propagation. Yes? That's different from plasticity. Um, why is it that we get less uniform elongation um, when uh, we reduce the grain size, it's because, so if this is the, um, you may have to write this down because it's not in the slide. When, um, when we um, look at the Hall-Petch equation, 
for the yield strength, we find a curve like this. Yes, and when we uh, do, uh, you can measure the, uh, the whole patch equation also for the tensile strength. Yes, and if you do that, the tensile strength, uh, you find something a line which has a, a slope that is smaller. Yes. So what does this mean? Is that there is a grain size here, yes, where the yield strength and the tensile strength are the same, yes, yes. And when you have yield strength is the same as tensile strength, you have no elongation anymore, yes. It's like uh, if, if I have something like like this, so it's like the yield strength becomes the same as this, right? So that means. I have no, no elongation, no uniform elongation anymore, yes? Uh, so, so that's what you generally see, is that uh, grain size has negative impact on, on uh, uh, plasticity. Hmm? So, um, uh, it, it's, it's something you, you have to be aware of when you um, improve uh, matters. Uh, through grain size um, reduction. Um, now, how do we control the grain size in, uh, in steel in technological uh, circumstances? Well, we usually do that during uh, hot deformation of the material. And so let's have a look at what happens when we do hot deformation of a steel in a hot strip mill. In a hot strip mill, we roll the material at different temperatures, yes? So what do we get? Uh, well, first of all, this graph shows the temperature as a function of time, yeah? position in the mill. And, you, uh, and these wiggles here are deformation steps. You can think of them as being um, uh, uh, in a rolling mill. These would be rolling passes. So, in the, uh, so you start with the material is uh, at high temperatures, high temperatures, so we know it's austenite. Yeah? And uh, you roll it, you roll it, and uh, then you pass it through another mill, roll it again. Uh, there can be many steps of this time, four or five steps of uh, what we call roughing mill at, at relatively high temperatures. What is high temperature? 1100 degrees C or more, yes? And what you get is the uh, austenite deforms and recrystallizes constantly. As you deform it, it recrystallizes and it becomes soft again. Hmm? Uh, as it recrystallizes, I get some grain refinement, yes? But the grains refine and then they grow. And it's good because we are at high temperatures. Uh, the kinetics of this grain growth is, is, is actually rather fast. Yeah. Um, so even though we, we do a lot of deformation, there's a lot of deformation plus recrystallization, yes, um, we end up with a relatively coarse uh, austenite grain. Yes. And then we go through a very thin region, which is called the non-recrystallization region. It's a very small region where the austenite, if we were able to deform in this particular region, um, the austenite would not recrystallize. And I would be able to transform, when, so as, as, we, as we cool down, yes, uh, we, we stop the, the rolling, finish the rolling, 